And we're back with Riders of the Dawn. This is Stu. This is Jay. Thank you for joining us this morning or evening or whenever you happen to be listening to the podcast. I think today we're going to talk about uh, being self-taught. Yes. Um, self-teaching or self-learning um, as opposed to uh, merely complaining about education or something like that. Yeah. Uh, this is something, you know, uh, Stu and I both happen to work in education. Um, as well as all the other fun stuff we get to do. And one thing that I notice with my students is that um, there's this emphasis on teachers. And now that I think this emphasis of for teachers comes from teachers, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, teachers are highly incentivized to want to have their job. So uh, it's, it's in their best interest to tell everyone how great they are. Yeah. Yeah, and it's in the interest of the, of the teachers' unions to uh, promote the importance of, of teaching, not just teaching, but the school systems which employ the teachers, that yeah. those things are essential and those things are necessary, and that without teachers, you can't learn. And I've addressed some of those ideas in my YouTube videos, if you guys have ever watched any of those. Um, but basically, um, I think the key to finding success in this endeavor, writing or really anything else, is the degree to which you're able to self-learn rather than require the input of an instructor in order to progress. Yeah, and I, a lot of times we we misvalue wisdom versus like technical knowledge. And I think that's what a lot of teachers try to sell you on is this idea of wisdom. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, if you're, not, if you're not finding a teacher out in the actual marketplace, um, the, then the people who are teaching you are not market facing and they're not going to be able to give you advice that is applicable to the real world. So I remember when I was in high school, I had one teacher who was market facing. Of course, he was my economics teacher. And so I learned a lot about economics and I really remember my senior year just being a waste of my time other than, other than that economics class. Uh, everything else I did was was me self learning outside of outside of the school to pursue my goals and, and things like this. You know, I was I was working on auditions for for music school. Um, I was working on Allstate auditions. I you know it was just like nonstop working towards towards these musical goals um, that even my band director couldn't help me on because he wasn't a um, a brass specialist, which is what I was doing at the time. So I was, I was self-learning, and we see this a lot with upperclassmen, um, where there's a point where the specialization that, that the student wants is not the specialization that the teacher has. Now that's not to say that there's no information to be given there, but there's a certain point where you, the student must take upon themselves the, uh, the gumption and the, the, the uh, desire to push past the scope of, of any class or any subject yeah. um, and we and I see this a lot with young writers and with young musicians is that is that they hit a point where it's easier for someone else to tell them how to do it because it'll take it'll take them you know five minutes to figure it out with someone telling them how to do it as opposed to if they actually sit down and try to figure it out on their own finding resources themselves it would take them 30 minutes so it's a pretty big time differential but if you look at that in the scope of cost benefit ratio now of course a, stu a high school student doesn't see this they're not paying taxes yet they don't understand where their money is going towards public education but what they what you look at that is you know if if five minutes of my time is worth, you know, 200 bucks uh, towards my salary, which I don't think is correct, that's just kind of an off the ball number, that's more than I would, than I would be paid at kind of my highest value in the, in the private sector. You know, where, when I taught private lessons, I was making at most $50 an hour. Uh, so you see this cost benefit ratio isn't, isn't there. And you're going to see this too in your writing. You could easily pay someone to help show you the ropes and do this or that. But frankly, all of the world's knowledge exists on YouTube. Yeah, you just have to go find it. And you know, this is something that Stu and I have done is like, you're, you're looking, how do I do this thing? YouTube, 
show me how. And you look, you look up a bunch of sources, and yeah, it takes you a while. That's what learning is. Yeah, that's the learning. Learning takes effort. And there's a good point there, is because the other thing is you have to think about, um, you know, investment. Uh, what what what's the investment in learning? So like, if you take 30 minutes to figure something out yourself, now you've learned how to learn something. And by learning how to learn something, the next time you choose to learn something on your own, it's going to be more efficient. It's where you're a very efficient self-learner. So being able to find the resources that you need to, to learn a particular technical detail, um, learning how to do that research, learning how to, and, and then through that process, you also internalize, you internalize the information a lot more than if somebody just told it to you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just, uh, that's a, that's because the amount of mental effort spent acquiring the information is greater, so you're processing it as you do it. There's a whole bunch of reasons why self-learning is more effective than just being told what to think. Um, but the main thing is, as you do it, you get better and better and better at it to, to the point where um, self-learning becomes a normal, natural thing. And you become really efficient and good at it, and you're able to learn the things that you want to learn quickly and easily without, without an instructor, which is important. Yeah, and again, the cost-benefit, if you're, if you're able to learn on your own, I mean, you, there are entire, entire courses worth of information online constructed into courses like MIT has all yeah. of its all of its lectures online now you're not gonna have a degree by the end of that but if you're if, if you're looking for the knowledge yeah knowledge knowledge is more important than the, than the degree frankly. yeah the, de the degree is merely a certification that you know something and this is a lot what a lot of people sort of misunderstand about college degrees and that again you know, I hear this sort of platitude that it's about quote it's about being educated I'm like well you know when you're when you're cooking fries with your women's studies degree, you're going to realize how much, quote, being educated matters to people who want you to do something or who, who want a certification of skills. Well, let's but, let's be honest. I mean, they'll be working for Huffington Post or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, they won't. <laughs> yeah, there's only like the top 1% of women's studies majors that actually get to do anything. And, and like, I mean, I, it's just true. Um, being, quote, being educated, that's, that's a very nebulous thing. It doesn't mean anything in specifics. So the degree is really just to certify that you know something. And if you have a college degree, it's supposed to certify that you're, quote, generally educated. But um, we, don't, um, we don't tend to need the general education cert certification if we're looking for, like, a computer programmer or yeah. somebody with specific knowledge or skills. Education, if education provides a general benefit to your life, then you don't really need the certification to gain the benefit. If you do need the certification to gain the benefit, then education is not the goal of, of schooling and, and, higher, and higher education too. Then education isn't the goal. Certification is the goal. Most people want as little education for their money as possible. Like, I, I, yeah. I want an easy, what's an easy class I can take? It's like, well, do you want to learn something or do you want to, oh, I, I want to get this degree so I can go out and make money. It's like, okay, good luck with that. Yeah. So, some of the things we've talked about previously, um, that you you will benefit from being a self learner with, from would be uh, we talked about book cover design. Um, you could yeah. pay someone a lot of money to do that, or you could go out and learn those design skills. Yeah, um, and it's going to be more time. I mean, you're you're going to be giving up your time to learn a new skill, and uh, that time that you spend learning the new skill could be spent writing more books. You got to decide the trade off. But through learning that skill. You save yourself money, but you also might gain a deeper understanding of how marketing works with books yeah. and how you're going to be, make money in this business or how you're just going to get people to read your book. Um, and uh, in the end, that might you, might you being able to directly use that skill might be more efficient because you'll also have an ability to judge whether or not anybody else that you hire or, or gets hired by your publisher to do a book cover for you, whether they're competent or not. Um, there are best-selling book covers that the design elements are really simple and bad. You know, I did a YouTube video on, uh, I remade the cover for Name of the Wind in Inkscape, a free program. I just remade it using stock photography and uh, you know, it took me like an hour. Uh, and it took me an hour because I wanted it to look exactly like the original. Yeah. But it was only like a few elements that, like a, a two, two photos that I blended together, and then a third one that I, that's just pasted on top. And people were like, oh, what you did at the end where you where you put that layer of grass made it look so much more real than the actual cover. It's like, yeah, it's just that extra step of thought. You 
just because something's on a best-selling book cover doesn't mean somebody incredibly competent designed it. Well, and of course you look at, uh, I mean, when they when they do second, third, fourth editions of, of these older older books, a lot of times you just get like a, a monochrome uh, color and then a little tiny, almost avatar-like picture. I'm thinking of that Michael Moorcock. Oh yeah, the Michael you. Moorcock editions were like, the doll, they took the doll cover and made it just a little circle. It's a great edition, but... I like that. I like the old Michael Whalen yeah. paintings a lot more. <clears throat> um, so here's a. Let me see if I can give you guys some advice on on how to self learn um, in 2017. I guess. So we've we've hinted at a couple things. You can find coursework online. You can find this and that. I'm going to give you the first step that's really really good, which is go find somebody who already does what you do, and just ask them. What do I need to learn to do what you do? What do you think I should go learn? Don't don't ask them where I should go to school, because that's that's thinking way inside the box. Um, just say what do I need to learn, and that person will probably be able to tell you in just a couple sentences what you need to learn. People drop by on YouTube all the time and ask me what do I need to learn to be a classical guitarist. I'm like you got to learn this, this, and that. And the other, can you suggest some repertoire? Here's some repertoire. Here's the standard rep. I know all that stuff because I did it. Do you need me to show you all the fingerings? Well, the fingerings are written in the music. Um, and the technique is on the videos and mm -hmm. on other people's videos. So you could totally figure out how to do all that on your own as a self-learner. But sometimes if you haven't got your feet into it, you don't know what exactly you need to go out and learn. Uh, so asking, just ask somebody who already does it, what do I need to learn? Um, another thing you could do is you could go find a course catalog for a college and see what courses they require for a particular degree certification, and that'll give you a little bit of an idea of what knowledge people get through a four-year degree and what knowledge of that you think would be helpful to you. Now, one thing that, that I think a lot of critics of self-learning will, will give is, well, where do you start? The, you know, these subjects are so big. I can't just start with the thing that I want to learn. Um, and to that I say, why not? Yeah, why can't you start with what you actually want to do? So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, like I said, critics of self learning, um, and, and I understand self learning is hard, but you got it, you got to do it. And these a lot of things that you'll hear is uh, you know where do I start? Um, what how do I um, how do I get like the the baseline of this education so I can come up to this level where I, where I need to be. Um, and I know right away that these people haven't even tried. They give up before they, they try because how can you, I will tell you, you will know very quickly where to start once you start. Because you'll yeah. try something and, and you'll and say, oh, wait, I don't know, wait, how do I do this? And, and that, that, is, that is the beginning of self-learning. Yeah, you'll know exactly, like, I don't know how to do this, this thing. How do I do this? So yeah. then there's your, there's your first question. So, like, uh, for me, when, when I started my first first book cover luckily you know uh Stu had some some more experience than I did so he kind of sat down and, and walked me through a little bit but then when I finally sat down that was my first question wait how do I do this uh so YouTube how do I do this um I remember uh, how do I um how do I use gradients to uh to edit photos was was kind of the beginning and so I had to learn how to um you know cut an object using, you know, like set mask, I think is, yeah. is, how, is how you do it. And, you know, it took me, it took me quite a while to figure out what I was doing. Um, then, you know, figuring out how to do, wait, how do I do typography? How do I do this? How do I find new fonts? And so the goal, I think the goal of, of learning is not just to find answers. It's to find questions. Yeah, because if you're just looking for answers, then you're you find that that's why you think teachers are great. That's why a lot of people think teachers are great. Oh well, if I'm just looking for answers, then I just need someone to tell me how to do it. That's what a teacher's for. But being self self taught is about searching for questions. Yeah. So if you're that's your first question, I want to be able to make my own book cover. How do I do that? So start there, and then you're going to get some some generalized information. Then you're going to start trying it on your own. And then you're going to get some much more specific questions. You don't need to start at the beginning like, if you press Control F1, that will give you your selection tool. 
Everybody, press control F1. Do you see how your cursor has changed <laughs> onto an arrow? Okay, so yeah. in, the, in the time that it's taken me to do this terrible Ben Stein impression, you could have found that information, plus done it a couple times and messed around with things. So a lot of times, especially a classroom environment, is is very stifling to a self learner yeah, we don't. I mean, this is a this is something that I, I will say often is that we don't uh, we don't put kids in classes of thirty because it's good for them. Yeah. Uh, we do it because it's efficient. It's a thirty to one ratio. You have one person teaching thirty people at once. That's it's really like efficient from a money perspective. You only got to pay one teacher to oversee these thirty children and their learning, um, and that frees up thirty parents to go work. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a uh, it's a it's an economic efficiency thing. It's, it has nothing to do with the quality of learning. You know, one on one is best, but most people can't afford one on one. Yeah. Um, even in the free market, one on one can be quite expensive. But it could be so much more effective that maybe you need less less time, mm -hmm. less class time. You know, a one hour lesson on guitar is probably more valuable than five one hours of guitar class in a week. Yeah. Probably much more valuable. Yeah. Actually, you're probably going to do a lot more accelerated learning with that one hour of one-on-one -on -one time. As long as you're putting the work in. Yeah, as long as you're practicing. Yeah. So that's 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 a that's a thing that's important. Um, another thing that, that uh, I think is really important for self-learning is learn by doing. Mm -hmm. So learn by doing, talk about once you start trying to do it, you're gonna find the questions. Just the repetition of a process, the repetition of attempting to do something, you will find yourself getting better and better at it, whatever it is. If you're gonna, if you decide, you know, I really wanna be a comic book artist, First time you try drawing some character, designing character, you, it's gonna suck. But each time, each iteration you do, it gets better and better. And it's all the little micro lessons that can't even be properly defined. That it's like, oh, you know, I make the point of the nose like this if I want it to look this certain way. That that you start to learn by doing. And you do you pick up millions of little lessons just by doing it until you're really good at it. It's the same thing with learning music and the repetition of technique. I can show you the technique, but from that from that point, it's you doing it enough to where it, it becomes easy and you internalize it as part of your process. Absolutely. So, uh, what are some other things we, we we need to talk about that you need to look at towards being self-taught? I think um, learning how to put your put your manuscript into an ebook format. Oh yeah, so so writing specific stuff. Yeah, okay. Learning. So here's the stuff that you need to learn yourself as a writer. And let's maybe start with like the technical thing. You need to learn how to write with proper style, right? With with the appropriate style. So that means being able to write with proper grammar and stuff like that. Uh, you're gonna do that by through repetition and letting people read it. Mm -hmm. You can also pick up like E.B. White's manual of style, which is you know 100 years old now, but it's correct um, for how to do lots of things. Um, that's a that's a big learn by doing kind of thing. You need to learn how to um, to format paragraphs in a way that makes sense. You have to know the technical parts of how to format dialogue so people can read it. You can get that just by looking at books yeah. and and analyzing. That's that's a way to learn that. Uh, you need to be able to learn uh, about about marketing and having yourself um, having your having a public self. Um, so this this is going to be things like understanding how social media works, uh, understanding how um, a little bit about web design. Uh, you know, figuring out how to make a WordPress site or you know your own kind of kind of site. You don't you don't specifically need to be a web designer to be able to do these things. You can find these skills um, where own, where it's yeah. prepackaged and you can you can do things much more. In a lay person way, you don't, you're not going to have to raw the. Uh, you're not going to have to manipulate write raw code. code. Yeah. So that that's the other thing too. And you, it's, it's worth your time to learn CSS, mm -hmm. which is cascading style sheets, because that will improve your web design a lot. Learn some basic HTML. You know, you can um, go to you can go to Code Academy, which is a which is a free site, and learn all that stuff in an afternoon. Yeah. And learn the basics, and then you'll, of course you want to practice it, but you can learn how to how to do the basics from there and understand the language a little bit. Yeah, so that's 
Uh, that's very good. We mentioned formatting an ebook. You got to learn how. Um, you have to learn the ins and outs of how to take a Microsoft Word document and turn it into other things. So turning it into an ebook, which I think is pretty straightforward, but lots of people make really terrible looking ebooks because they don't realize how their formatting on their document translates into an ebook. There's people who use uh, who use tabbed and did their paragraphs, for instance. You actually shouldn't do that. You should set the uh, indent as a specific measurement in your paragraph style and never use tab because when it goes into the ebook formatting, the tab characters don't show up at all. So mm -hmm. you don't have any paragraphs that look correct. They're all on the left-hand margin. Um, so that's something that you got to be aware of. And, and that information's out there and you have to go, you got to go find it. Um, you can't, if, if you put a bunch of empty lines in, it's going to look really bad on a lot of e-readers. Um, it's just something that you're going to have to learn to do is to format stuff. Same thing if you want to make a paperback. Yeah. You're going to have to learn how formatting your document is going to turn into a good looking paperback instead of something that looks like completely awful. Yeah. And you can, you can hire people to do that for you. You can yeah. totally hire people. But once you have the skill, you're going to wonder why you ever hired someone to do that at great expense. Yeah. Because uh, the skills are, once you have the skills, then it's easy. Another thing you're gonna have to learn to do is to self-edit. Um, yeah, we, we're, we're probably gonna do a whole podcast on how to edit. Yeah, editing is actually probably, that should be a series. Yeah. Um, editing, you know, you're gonna, you're always gonna want feedback, but hopefully you're not gonna have to pay someone for feedback. Um, things like um, grammar and syntax, um, at least if you're self-publishing, some of that's going to make it in. You're going to, but you got to keep an eye out for it. And having multiple sets of eyes looking at it are going to help you find it, find yeah, these kinds of sure. things. Content editing for like, you know, plot consistency that again, having multiple eyes on it or just spending time away from the document is going to help you iron that out. Uh, and if you're, if you're going the standard publishing route, you've got to, you need to understand uh, contract reading. Uh, you need to understand uh, how to how to properly do a form letter or a query letter. Yeah. Um, you got to understand how that business works. Otherwise, otherwise you're not going to be successful and and you're going to be bitter about doing it. Yeah. Um, and that's honestly that's uh, when it comes to self learning, a lot of people don't get past the frustration stage, mm -hmm. and you have to get past the frustration stage, where they get there and they're like. Um, man, I just, I, how do I, how do I be better at this? And then they give up. Mm -hmm. You have to get past that stage. The other thing is people take up a course of study that's not self-taught with the aim of gaining skills for the thing they actually want to do. And then they get frustrated because it's they're nice. not learning what they want to learn. Yeah. You know, the solution to that is to always learn what you want to learn no matter what else you're doing. And that is a bit of wisdom from two people who did exactly that. All right, I reckon that's probably it for today. Um, thank you for joining us on this edition of Riders of the Dawn, episode 10, I believe. Awesome. Uh, this awesome. is Stu. This is Jay. You can find me at MatthewJWellman.com. And you can find me at DavidVStewart.com and DBSPress.com. You can email the show at Stu at DavidVStewart.com. We do have a YouTube channel now, too. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But it's mostly just going to be the podcasts if you want to listen to them on YouTube. And I think we're going to try and do some YouTube exclusive stuff. Yeah, we'll do some YouTube exclusive stuff, too. So keep an eye out for that. It'll all be linked in the description um, so you can find it. Have a great one. Later.